Good morning, it's Reverend Mike Caper, the First Presbyterian Church of Elmwood Park. I'm here with uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 17 through 2, 5. That's our text. Paul has this interesting uh, discussion about the cross with the people in the church in Corinth. Here we go. Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know God, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, Think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. And it's because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us the wisdom of God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not wise and persuasive in words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on God's power. I'm going to summarize this Bible passage in one sentence, and you probably won't like it. Here we go. Christianity is for losers. That's basically what Paul says. There are people in whom the world views as winners. There are wise people, philosophers, scholars, lawyers, religious professionals. Eh, we don't have a lot of those around here. We also don't have a lot of athletes, and we're a little short on scientists. Mostly just regular folks. And here's the thing. Let's just get this out of the way now up front. Paul does not argue that when weak and foolish people become Christians, they suddenly become wise and strong. Nope. Knowledge of the cross does not result in a revamping of our human capacities. On the contrary, the cross is just plain humbling to everyone. The cross was humbling to Jesus, who endured its shame. The cross was humbling to God the Father, who experienced the death of his Son. Some even say that immortal God experienced what it was to die. The cross is humbling to us, as it dawns on us just what happened at that climactic moment of world history, and why. If you read everything Paul has to say about the cross, you will notice a distinct lack of blame for specific people. He never talks about Pilate or Herod. He never blames Jesus' death on either Romans or the Jews. 
he does talk about it somehow being the result of human sin, but it's always in the abstract. He doesn't point a finger at any of us and decry how horrible we are, at least not while he's talking about the cross. When he talks about sin, it's generally in the third person, all, including yours truly, have fallen short of the glory of God. And here's the kicker. If Paul blames anyone for the cross, it's God. And here's the second kicker. Call it the extra point. The cross is not bad news. It is good news. The cross is the occasion of God's self-revelation. It reveals God's character. It reveals God as a free, sovereign God, not bound by human categories and expectations. And what does God reveal about God's self? Emmanuel, sometimes a word for Jesus, God with us, does not shrink from hardship. Emmanuel is loving, is love, self-sacrificing agape love. Emmanuel is free. The word of the cross reveals God as a free, sovereign God, not bound by human categories and expectations. Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient, even to the point of death, even death on a cross. That's from Philippians 2. It might be a little much to say that Jesus committed suicide, People who commit suicide are usually running away from something. Jesus was running toward something, toward us. People who commit suicide think it will ease their pain and hardship. It's a last-ditch escape attempt. Jesus leaned into pain and hardship. He was acting out of love, duty, and intention. Jesus loved life and asked his father if the cup the need for him to die, might pass from him. It would not, and he went to the cross as needed. And so we look at the cross and join in the words of an old hymn, I take, O cross, thy shadow from my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Content to let the world go by, to know no gain nor loss my sinful self, my only shame, my glory, all the cross. The cross is a moment of self-revelation where God is revealed as a saving God. That, my friends, is the wisdom of God. The cross reveals the idolatrous nature of human wisdom and values. Human wisdom is self-serving at the expense of others. God's wisdom is the in the crucifixion, saves others at the expense of self. First Corinthians, uh, this passage, quotes and echoes Isaiah 29, where the superficiality of the people's work and worship is revealed. Here's Isaiah 29, 13 to 16. The Lord says, These people come near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based merely on human rules they've been taught. Therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish, and the intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord who do their work in darkness and think, who sees us? Who will know? You people turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. Shall what is formed turn and say to the one who formed it, you didn't make me? Can the pot say to the potter, 
You know nothing? Isaiah exhorts the people to turn away from their selfish interests, to stop going through the motions and dedicate themselves to God. It's a good prophetic text, quite beautiful really. It hits at the wonder of God our maker who forms us. But the cross rips away the curtain and exposes the heart and the depths of God. The cross is God's power, available not just to a few special leaders, but to the entire community. The gospel liberates the poorly educated, the politically helpless, and those of modest birth, those who have no money, those who are long-suffering with chronic health conditions, those who have suffered tragedy and trauma, the weak find their strength not in themselves, even when renewed by the gospel, but their strength is in Christ, who becomes for them wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. The community finds unity in the message of the cross, whose paradox exposes the self-deception of the wise, and at the same time cultivates a people who discern God's foolishness and God's weakness. These things are more deep and profound than what the world sees when it looks at the cross in a casual glance. By deeply gazing at the cross, we perceive the sovereign freedom of God whose actions demonstrate that God's ways are simply not our ways. God is not the kind of God to be comprehended or captured by human reckoning. Grace is so radical a reality that it takes a self-revelation on God's part to make the knowledge of God a real possibility. And the more we come to know this God, the more we discover that God is trustworthy, that God will go the distance, that God is with us through thick and thin. Well, we just grow stronger in our confidence that God is trustworthy. Our faith grows. God is trustworthy through the worst moments of our life, through the cross of Christ and through whatever crosses we bear. God is trustworthy. And that is shown in the cross. Amen, my friends. God bless.